yeah so let us start so uh, hi Hello. everyone so uh, we uh, arun uh, from walmart global tech and hyper tsc member and i'm kamlesh cto blockchain of future tech and so uh, in today's session we are going to talk about the blockchain adoption ecosystem in india so we all know like how countries and the corporates are responding to the blockchain adoption so we just collected some information the adoption clarity on the in india india geography and what people are building uh, what companies are doing government involvement and startup ecosystem so just uh, so we are part of the hyperledger india chapter and these are the our connect details you can connect on the linkedin wiki mailing list and rocket chat you can scan the qr code and connect to us we uh, we meet every thursday 3 pm india time uh, welcome to all okay so uh, india lenders can skip so uh, generally uh, uh, in blockchain adoption two different space one is a startup space and another is a government space so in a start startup so there are growing blockchain startups across in india like they are building on the agriculture use cases waste management skill credential identity management supply chain trade finance and we have i think more than 200 plus startups working in the blockchain in india and government space so uh, in the government all the all the state government central governments niti aayog uh, nisg and cdec nics npci even rbi recently announced their uh, cbdc proposal or kind of discussion to start the cbdc implementation uh, ministry of it and electronic started the center of excellence excellence a pyre called and stem is part of that uh, uh, that center so similarly there are various initiatives by the government space uh, in all the i think 20 plus all the 20 plus indian states are working on blockchain whether in e governance projects or maybe some kind of uh, blockchain strategies like tamil nadu e governance come with the blockchain so, we'll we'll the on practice about the implementation of the different use cases recently the india also come with the national blockchain strategy like because like like china bsn uh, eb ebsi europe also there on strategy so similarly blocks india also come up with their own blockchain strategy to promote the blockchain adoption in india uh, whether it is e governance projects whether it is a startup or any kind of digital transformation so startup ecosystem so uh, just let's let us report by pwc is a india blockchain market by 2030 will be around uh for uh, this compare around 33 around billion dollar so you can see the global uh, projection of the blockchain adoption in india in uh, in word you can see the india us and china so india around 20 to 30 billion dollar market and different use cases people are building in the identity management and credential provenance and traceability uh, payments agreements and loyalty rewards so these are the different uh, sectors and their contribution to the in billion dollar values uh, this is the startup ecosystem report by avas person uh, this is the one kind of uh, reporting company based in india they will do the market study of the blockchain adoption in india and this is report be told around 2020 and you can see the different blockchain startups in different sectors like bfsi there are a couple of startups like vendx matic pipra and government many startups like oxys they be healthcare recruitment retail cpg technology so there are technology startups also like who provide the uh, blockchain services or technology services or helping customer to build their uh, blockchain products and services so all the segments uh, india is doing good in terms of the blockchain adoption many startups in different segments like you can see the stat week which is a part of the unicef innovation fund and recently implemented the vaccine tracker on the blockchain based for the covid-19 vaccine too so and there are 
couple of startups incubated in Indi India from USA, like Montego, one of the startup which is which is not founded in India, but uh, in India. So such like 200 plus startup working in the different segments and dif different technology. In Hyperledger too. So in Hyperledger, we also have a different member companies and startups, which are a member of Hyperledger. And Hyperledger, uh, Hyper Membership is a global membership of different technology companies, uh, functional companies working in the blockchain space. So these are the list of the blockchain companies and startups which are member member of the Hyperledger. And there are many more. Now, if we miss some something, then you can the complete list you can see in the Hyperledger members list. So Stem Future Tech, KBA, Tech Mahindra, Imargo, Paramount, Chainyard, Mindtree, Vipro. So these are the startups and companies working on the which are a member of the Hyperledger and contributing to the Hyperledger projects and Hyperledger community. Now I'll hand over to Arun to talk about the government space. Thanks, Kamlesh. So um, we just saw how how broad and how wide is Indian startup ecosystem, right? Adopting, just imagining there are like 200 companies working on blockchain technology within India is is um, is an enormous number, and you could imagine the scale at which India operates, right? So because of the population or because of the diversity involved, and and when we talk about these terms, like blockchain doesn't come. Uh, as is blockchain does blockchain is not a technology where we don't we cannot we can we can leave other social aspects of it so why why do we require a, a like government involvement here so governance in india has unique challenges as i said because of the scale at which anything in india operates and because of diversity involved and because of just the sheer amount of complexity in the processes uh, involved and blockchain is a technology which will offer a unique way of solving governance related issues so because of this wide um, vast coverage of challenges that india faces india needs new way of governance and that's where blockchain can help in and blockchain also helps in self regulation and it reduces regulatory burden on on some of the businesses, it increases ease of doing business within India. And Niti actually has released two two papers. Like they formalized a strategy document and then they release it in two parts. Where in which first part they show, I mean they did POC on four different use cases. They they released their learnings on those four use cases, saying stating what worked for them, what did not work, and the paper also discusses some of the key elements such as do we need a law change or is policy or indian law blocking some of the blockchain adoption what are those hurdles and how how can we overcome with the technological advancements and in the second white paper they are discussing some of the recommendations right and what is the next step that india can take and how can india proceed from there so this is what you can find in niti ayog's uh, white paper which they which, which they had released a couple of years ago and uh, why is blockchain important for india right? why because i mean when in, in terms of ease of doing business india has moved definitely by 79 positions from in last five years uh, from being somewhere in back to india is currently at like 65th position overall in the world but still there are those 65 positions and when we look at the key terms or key areas where india can further improve on that is all related to or some somewhat related to the regulatory compliance cost involved in india and some of the uh, corruption practices which are ground rooted which is which is very hard to catch and also some of the things like trust in case of border uh, transactions so when all these challenges that we have in terms of improving ease of business is all related to trust and wherever there is there are trust issues blockchain is a technology that can improve it, it so process efficiency and and um like that is an inherent property of blockchain technology and that's where blockchain it for indian government chain is a uh, strategic technology and yeah. in the next slide we will also discuss about india's national blockchain strategy so if you are very active in the blockchain space recently you might have come across this 
uh, white paper which was released by uh, Indian government, like METI, Ministry of uh, Ministry. Um, Ministry of so, IT and Electronics. Right. So uh, this white paper, like, why do we need strategy at, at the national level, right? So we need strategy because in government of India saw opportunities, then they saw when there is too much opportunity, there, there should be some steps to leverage full potential of these opportunities available. And like this is not just targeted for its union government or central government projects, but this is also kind of laying grounds for different state governments and enterprises and, and including citizens. So government considers all of these views together and that's when they put up uh, a strategy document. And also uh, this strategy document not only fosters the projects in India, but also it enables ecosystem for research and development and also skilling uh, blockchain technology in India. Now let's talk about the POCs, which I told about, right? So Niti Aayog actually did four different POCs, as I said. One was around track and trace of drugs. And then there was um, like where Niti Aayog used it for claim verification and then approval for fertilizer subsidies. And then um, the other project which they did was on university certificates to uh, stop uh, invalid credential or invalid certificates being displayed. And the other use case which was done was around land records, like transfer of land records. We know all these are like key challenges which which in a country like, uh, like India we face. And if you can start adopting blockchain technology and when Niti Aayog showcased that after doing these POCs, Yes, blockchain technology is the key for us to solve these kind of problems. They also they reported this. Um, they were a major part of coming up with this national strategy document. And um, it's not just these things, but if you also look at the way uh, or like India's presence in digital identity space, I know, uh, like you might all know, India has a Aadhaar system, right, which is giving unique identity to everyone. And not just that, in like India revolutionized the payment system. India, in fact, has one of the uh, best in class payment system, which is through UPI. All, right? And then these different banks or payment service providers, they, they make use of UPI's APIs and, and they provide all these services. But so India has revolutionized the e payment se sector. And one more area why blockchain is important for India is because of like PMJ, which is like, um, which is going, which is providing largest healthcare um, initiative within within the world. Approximately uh, half a million people, if I'm not wrong, are getting benefited out of it. So having these many options, having a national strategy, it will streamline the processes. Um, and now let's talk about Indian state government initiatives, right? So we, at a large level, have strategy document which is being done and then there are startups which are working on different use cases now what are different states doing because we know um, the way india is governed like we have some of the topics which are which do come under state government some of the topics which do come under central government so within state government we, let's let's pick up some of the use cases right so maharashtra government um, in fact did pilot on healthcare transport agriculture and finance domains and um, they they also have their own uh, blockchain strategy and they also set up something called as Mahashub. If I, I mean, pardon me if I'm pronouncing it wrong. wrong. So they also came up with something like Mahash Shrunkala. So this is this is kind of a test night where they invite developers to come in and then develop their solutions and make use of the uh, platform or the technology space which is available and build solution on top of it. So let's also I discuss about one more state, which is Telangana. So Telangana, in, in fact, um, like recognized one of its district as blockchain district of, of India. Like they, they, in fact, named it, they call, they're calling it as India's first blockchain city. So they're providing subsidies wherever necessary for blockchain companies um, to establish yes. themselves in that place. And then they also formed something called as T-Block. It, it takes care of multiple startups working on different domains. They take them from validation and then uh, from seed stage they train them they give all the support needed and then after this four months long of um, acceleration period they 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 are in now position of like where's there's uh, 
companies can invest on on those startups so they they help in brainstorming those ideas and it's not just that like if there are multiple solutions i mean which are emerged out of this initiative within because of this telangana state government um, project a few of them which i can take out is like coiner and then param network helping on supply chain and then in workflow automation and then of course like india has its own tracex uh, company which works on food traceability and not just those things even in bank mo uh, which is which is providing blood bank uh, related services using blockchain technology um, there are few more use cases which i'll cover in next coming slides but having talked about all these blockchain strategies at state level and national level it's also equally important that we um, educate people on that it's like it's also equally important that we have right skills using which we can uh, further foster this technology and gain complete benefit of it so that's where the education institutes come into picture so it's not uh, just the job of central government or it's not just a job of uh, let's say some of the it takes sector companies but it should be a collaboration across every every party over here so some of the uh, listed points on the screen you, you you can imagine so there are universities who are partnering with it takes service providers in providing blockchain as a course offering and then not just that the government itself is providing subsidies and training courses they are helping people upskill themselves um like and of course like we have kamlesh also on the call they run indian blockchain institute so all these kind of effort is is paving way for next generation of tech technology um builders in in india yeah so thank you arun so uh, education initiative so even uh, different iit iim so they're on blockchain program with the executive blockchain program or maybe one year two year blockchain program which you can directly give a job to the candidates and in the there are momentum now that like every university and college are doing some kind of fdp program on blockchain so they want to educate and skill development of their faculties so they can integrate the blockchain module and courses in the existing degree courses this is lot lot of thing happening in the educational front so there is like, there is i mentioned about the upgrade uh, one of the edtech startup and they just become the billion dollar approx billion dollar startup in the uh, training space and they have a national education education training there so uh, missing about the government initiative state government initiatives we talk about tha we talk about maharashtra uh, strategy we talk about and there are tamil nadu government separate portal to manage and implement the blockchain in the across the tamil nadu state and there is a kerala blockchain strategy similarly different states coming with the different blockchain strategies to adopt the blockchain in the their e governance process or maybe providing a platform so uh, in the next half of the slide we will talk about the some successful implementation in india uh, from the startup from the companies and from the governments so before that what we are building actually so you can see the list of different use cases like people are building sustainable supply chains and building food traceability arun mentioned about the tracex and agri 10x telecom intent and from telecom blockchain this is well known and word known uh, use case implementation by try telecom authority of india and tech mahindra and there are uh, all the telco majors are part of this network is more than 30 30 organization in the network and there is a good kind of success story for the world like how nt spamming managing on the blockchain for the 1 billion dollar people 1 billion people and then banking and clearing settlement education listing credential trade finance e governance and this is an interesting area where waste management plastic recycle where nobody thinking blockchain could be applied but companies are coming up the use case and applying the to track the plastic recycle and kind of this kind of sustainable carbon emission tracking circular economy identity management is a use case people are uh, integrating the aadhar and uh, digital locker with the blockchain based identity management system vaccine certificate so recently the maharashtra government had implemented the vaccine certificate in blockchain based agriculture value chain different agriculture startups agri tech startups are adopting blockchain in their agri value chain or uh, food safety solutions kyc ml in general all the banks and tech finance companies are adopting it 
vaccine distribution, talk about that stat week, which is a part of the UNICEF Innovation Fund, are implemented the blockchain based platform for the vaccine distribution even before the COVID period, uh, tracking, tracking the different vaccine which are uh, distributed to the remote areas and there. Because in general, types of geography area. So there are always some challenges to distribute the vaccine across the regions. Renewable energy projects, so recently like uh, Uttar Pradesh government and uh, Delhi, Tata Power, different state government, because India has their vision to be like 2030, 2050 to become the net zero country and just providing, just want to focus on the renewable energy sources, whether it's a solar energy or wind energy. And there are lots of use cases in the renewable energy space, like uh, uh, P2P power distribution or kind of carbon emission and carbon tokenization of that renewable energy assets. So, uh, so then we have a couple of a detailed use case. So one is the from the verified credit certificate for the undocumented skilled labor. So uh, this this project done by uh, my company, and this is a this is a one of the project where we are tracking the uh, certificate for the undocumented skilled labor who are working in the maybe real estate projects or maybe some. I suppose this will be done for the Pune Metro project. So. Skill, but all these skill certificates, they don't have any kind of way to prove it, what kind of certificate they have. So we done for that one. And then this sustainable supply chain. So this is this is the done by the Adit Birla group and Birla Cellulose. So Birla Cellulose is one of the Adit Birla group company and they, they have their organic fiber. They are gen creating and manufacturing fiber from the forest. And they have two use cases. One is the kind of uh, sustainability from forest to fashion because of this Birla also their fashion retail division. So how uh, any uh, manufacturing from the forest area, what kind of practices, the, are they following the sustainable supply chain process or not? And then calculating the CO2 footprint of those all processes because at the end it's, it's matter like the, the products you are buying or the, the company need to follow their uh, SDG goals. So in this project, they are using the blockchain enabled traceability platform green track and they are do implementing two use cases one is from forest to fashion circular supply chain complete end-to-end -end supply chain of uh, fiber from forest to till consumer and then calculating the carbon emission and certification out of those processes and this is recently done by the Maharashtra government for the COVID-19 certificate and which is arrive in production and they are using the one of the uh, Indian startup and on the Matic network, Polygon network now. Now over to you, Arun. Talk about the great tech Mahindra. I think you are mute, I think, Arun. Arun, are you there? Or I can't hear you. I can hear you now. Sorry, I put my mute. Um, yeah, so I, I guess in keynote session earlier today, you heard from Rajesh on this particular use case where 1 billion subscriber problem is solved. So the main goal of this project is to uh, stop spam calls and, and help people avoid um, like from unsolicited SMS or messages. Now, why is it important for us to stop these things? Because spread of miscommunication and spread of misinformation is, is a major problem, especially during uh, some of the political uh, involve, uh, involvements, right? During elections or maybe some of the uh, debates, like this this could literally lead to some of the catastrophic things. So stopping those kind of things is, is very critical. Not just that, but because of um, many other reasons, like for example, somebody could send a spam message saying that, hey, buy this particular stock, it may increase and then if if they are like uh, tele spammers, then they can play around with the stock market, and then because of these kind of things, it's very important for for uh, government to look at it. Like that. so, and nearly like India has 1.8 million unsolicited telemarketers, and then like to f more than 5, 500,000 blacklisted unsolicited commercial communications received. And what does this blockchain problem do? Blockchain is used over here. Now, um, help solve this problem by like whoever is the marketer who wants to send those 
SMS in, in, at a large scale or do a telemarketing, they need to first register themselves onto this blockchain uh, system. And then user preferences are also compared against these telemarketers' uh, preferences. And only then when, when a proof is added onto blockchain, these calls or these SMSs are forwarded to actual customers. If there is no provenance, if there is no proof of uh, verification, then those messages are unsolicited, basically. And that's the tri regulation, and that's what telcos are solving. And they, in fact, solved. And this has been set as an example uh, across the world. Uh, now, the, talking about one other use case, I guess there was also a question in the Q&A section regarding this, which is about um, Vajra platform, right? So India already has a state-of-the-art uh, payment system through UPIs. Now, why do we need Vajra platform? Now, imagine that when you do a transaction, even though you complete your transaction in the background banks are involved and then they need to um, have those transactions settled or each bank they need to have their liquid assets moved from one place to other place so that is where and also there could be uh, issues of disputes there could be issues of um, like um, auditing which is required in this whole process so in order to save that time in order to uh, help out in, in these things. So uh, NPCI actually came up with this Vajra platform, which has one node, which is, it's a blockchain uh, ecosystem, of course, and it has one um, like clean clearing house node maintained by the NPCI themselves. And they also have participant nodes from multiple banks and uh, payment uh, processing industry, like PPI and ASP, all those companies, they're, they're forming their own nodes and then there is also one node with the other for authorization purpose or authentication, I mean, authentication and authorization purpose. So having a blockchain network of all these, it, they also have built APIs, which anybody can consume. So in fact, it is being used, like in customers are being impacted, but we uh, impacted in the sense we are getting benefit of it, but it's all, all happening behind the scene for us. And that's really a, a good implementation use case, which which could be discussed right, at the uh, implemented at uh, at a government level. And now let's talk about vaccine ledger. I guess Kamlesh briefly spoke about it in in his introduction, right? So um, UNICEF actually fund funded a project uh, uh, to Statway to come up with a vaccine tracker. In fact, this was a pre-COVID uh, time when this project was started. But once this project for vaccination tracking was implemented. This has really helped in, in uh, post-COVID era as well. And it, 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 with these uh, projects, we can know outage reports, we can know actionable um, route optimizations, and we can also do real-time de demand forecasting on, on vaccines. So that was, those were the benefits of Vaccine Ledger. And um, the other use case from one of the state government is UP uh, started this peer-to-peer -peer trading or solar rooftop like if you have your own solar rooftop and you would like to sell your excess energy to somebody else through smart meter the up government had this blockchain backed um, project where they, they allow you to sell it and then track your energy um, uh, uh, footprint or energy to your energy resource that you're selling through blockchain so that you can have that provenance um, track yeah yeah, yeah. Thank you. And I think a couple of such initiatives by Tata Power and uh, Delhi State. So uh, we just have two, three minutes. So like challenges. So generally, regulation and law enforcement. These are two things are trending in India. Like we all know, like crypto laws, where government says something, RBI says something. So this is trending. And but I think crypto laws and all the doesn't matter the blockchain adoption in the enterprise level. So as an enterprise initiative doesn't care what the with the crypto laws but another law is very important the data privacy law. unlike the other gdpr compliance by the from the euro the similarly data privacy law bill is pending in the government uh, parliament when it will come in the picture then then the data privacy gdpr kind of compliance is very uh, important in the blockchain based solution because currently like you know like when you can't you can't delete and remove the data uh, you can forget the information so then such kind of laws, some kind of create a challenge, but, but the technology now has a solution. You could 
implement the like private data collection in the fabric and such kind of uh, even you can do the is is sort of the ledger some technical i mean i recently i uh, uh, just joined yesterday so of the ibm they have some kind of new uh, new thoughts and research where you could implement the fabric as a gdpr compliance but that is in the in progress so this thing and in the next next five years where we see in the india so arun can share more light on this one so we just have one minute all right um so what next like what is what is the next step for government of india to proceed from here right so we have seen so many use cases already being adopted so what can what more can we see where can we see india uh, putting more efforts in or accelerating the effort in it of course we we are going to see changes in within the cbdc space more often could even come to the level of retail cbdc but uh, we need to wait and watch because just last week there was an uh, uh, important decision made by supreme court which kind of allowed um, like cryptocurrencies to flow in through the regular banking ecosystem and now there is of course growing ecosystem growing startup ecosystem we may see more of service providers more of um, uh, blockchain technology solutions providers increasing within within india and then of course because of india blockchain strategy um, which has space for everyone and anybody we are going to see uh, india blockchain infrastructure in, um, being improved a lot or interoperability being looked into it and maybe some of the research projects were also being started upon and yeah we will see national blockchain strategy um, in implementation which were so there are a couple of questions so just let it to me so there's a question about which blockchain framework vajra using so they are using hyperledger fabric and you that sital sensor okay so any more question so i think already session is ended yeah so in this session we try to give brief of what's happening within india ecosystem it's it's there's so many things happening so yeah we are happy to uh, extend this through hyperledger india chapter invite you to speak in our forums and and spread the word about what you're working on okay yeah so we can wrap up thank you thank you all